Hi, everyone. There is so much concern about the coronavirus right now, and so I, as the director of Common Knowledge Trust, has compiled some self-help. We're going to post it on this link. You can see it up in the corner there. I'm going to read some of it because it's really important for us to be able to understand what's happening, particularly during pregnancy, when we give birth, when we have small children at home, and why this is so frightening to us. So this is how Common Knowledge Trust is explaining how to think about it when you get pregnant or when you're not pregnant or at my age. If you are terrified and anxious or fearful, it is okay. It, this is unknown. The medical profession isn't testing it as well as it could in many places. There's no treatment and there's no prevention. <clears throat> and so it's normal to feel fear. You also don't want that to paralyze you because you need to take care of those around you. Excuse me. <clears throat> Most people can get access to homeopathics, and we're going to talk about homeopathics a little bit. Aconite and Argentum Nictrum are very good homeopathics to take when you feel frightened or if others you know do. And the other thing we want you to know is how very important it is for you to act first and act fast. There's an article in Parenting that you can read that's very specific about pregnancy and what they know and they don't know. So we're going to talk about this in a more generalized form. All viruses and bacteria in yeast multiply very rapidly. So your number one job is to cut down on the amount of viruses coming into you. If you're a woman who has had a yeast infection, it's the same thing. As soon as you itch or discomfort down there, wash that away. It's not about going inside or suppositories. When that itching is occurring, it's just that the yeast are multiplying. So if you wash in warm water and cut down that load of yeast, the vaginal yeast infection will go away, or you'll reduce its longevity in you. And this is a virus, and so you have to behave the same way. You need Your number one job is to cut down on the viral load in your system. And that is just so important. So the virus will enter your body through your eyes, your ears, your nose, or your mouth. And these are, this is carried by your hands. And they're talking a lot about washing your hands. It's very hard not to touch your face. And it's very hard for kids not to touch their face. So you want to keep those orifices flushed or washed if you are exposed to coronavirus. You don't have to do that now. That just makes crazies. And we're going to talk about that as well and what they know about it. So just to hold on because these JPEGs are going to be available for you. So at the very first symptoms of an itchy nose or eyes or ears or a tickling in the throat or a fullness in your tummy, even before the fever, the dry cough comes, you want to self-treat. Now, there's a lot of messaging out there not to use natural health symptom um, remedies because they don't do anything. This is the difference between modern medicine and natural health. With natural health, you want to act sooner. It, as we've become more complacent with modern medicine, we get sick and we go, oh, we'll just let it go for a few days because there's always something we can take if it gets worse. With this virus or anything else, this becomes a habit. Treat immediately. Don't wait. Because if you can reduce the volume of virus or bacteria yeast in your system, you may not get sicker. And that's really important. The medical profession doesn't have a prevention or a cure for the coronavirus yet. So just use natural health that's available in your area. It's not a question of trying to cure yourself magically. It's trying to reduce or prevent the viral load in your body from getting out of control. So it's always act first 
and fast using natural methods alongside any medical care you have. So here is what the virus does. If it enters into your eyes, your eyes will get itchy. So your eyes can itch now. You can have hay fever. My eyes itch periodically. I scratch them now because I'm not concerned at the moment that I'm going to get coronavirus. It does not just arrive. It has very specific behaviors that we now understand, which is that this is a cluster disease. So you want to just wash out your eyes. And if your kids are itching, just wash your eyes and then wash your hands as well. Every time they itch, just wash your eyes warm water. If you have things like hypercal, which is a calendula and hypericum, you can dilute that, use an eye cup, just warm water, wash it out. With your nose, take a drop of slightly salted water and just sniff it up. Have your kids learn to do that because the salt water changes the environment and it will prevent or can or might prevent the virus from going further into your nose. If your ears are itching, just splash them out with slightly salt water and do this, get the salt water into your ear. That's okay. With your throat, the symptoms are, and there are articles here for you to read, it gets tickly at first and then it gets sore and red because the virus enters through your throat and your nose. So gargle with slightly salt water. And if you have herbs that you use for that, do that as well. And you can get a spray propolis spray or hypercal spray and spray your kids throats periodically whenever you feel that itching or the soreness on swallowing do it over and over again sometimes with a yeast infection you actually have to to wash you know quite frequently ab about it until you get it under control but once you get it under control it will cut back the throat will be less sore the nose will be less stuffed if your tummy, sometimes when we get sick, our tummy feels full or unsettled, it doesn't mean that you feel nauseous. You just don't feel right. So that's a good time to just drink some salty water or diluted vinegar or di dissolved baking soda. It's changing the environment in your system so that the virus doesn't get out of control. And that's just important to do. And you're in your environment, I'm in my environment, so you have to make choices in your environment. And also take lots of pre and probiotics, or yogurts, or kefirs, or fermented foods. You want to keep your digestive tract open. If you get constipated, take some sort of a natural laxative. Try to keep your bowels open. Or flaxseed to put more moisture in your bowel. And you can also, it's really important to be able to create at home an oral rehydration formula, slightly salty, slightly sweet. You can put a little fruit juice in it or something like that. Stay hydrated. So you're washing these orifices out. You're changing the environment of them. And it's always good to start a lot of vitamin C. Can vitamin C cure things? Who knows? That's not the point. The point is you're doing something to try to cut down the amount of virus that's coming into your system or your children's systems. I have a, a reference to a now food product that you can get online. It's called Alibiotic. It has oregano oil, olive leaf extract, garlic. These are antiviral properties. And you will have, before you get the fever, before you get the dry cough, you're going to have two to five days and you to work on this and then maybe you'll prevent it. Your number one job is to cut down on the amount of virus that's coming into your system. So everything you do can help you from, or your children from getting sicker and most people, you included, me included, we ignore these early symptoms and then we just get sicker. It's like with the flu, we don't feel well, we keep going to work, we get the sniffles, we have achy, and then we get sick three to five days later. You don't want to do that with this because we don't know what this really is. So fever, this is going to be different than what you're told to the medical profession, but we want you to listen to this. Fever is the natural way that your body has of trying to kill bad things in your system. So you don't want to mask the fever 
if possible, by taking things that do that. You just want to let the fever build up. You don't want it to go crazy. Of course you want to take something if your fever is just off the planet or if your children's fevers are. But you also want to learn that children can have higher fevers than adults can. So if you start early, you may not get a fever. Your fever may be low. And it, it, you want to work with a fever, not against it. So if you have access to homeopathics, which most do, and we can get them online, Ferrumfos is a tissue salt, and Belladonna if you get red cheeks. Okay, The dry cough, that's really important. We're not hearing in any of the reports that you get a wet cough or productive cough. It's a dry cough. So if you've had a sore throat and stuff in your nose, if it's come into your body, it eventually goes down to your respiratory system. It's easier to catch these things here than it is down here. So if you have a dry cough, still gargle frequently with diluted salt water. It doesn't have to be strong. It just has to be slightly salty. Find a herbal, natural herbal throat spray like propolis or something like that. Ah, just one spray in your mouth. Every time you feel sore, your kid's sore, or you look in and it's red. Homeopathic Brionia is very good for dry coughs. And you can find other herbal combinations online or at a health food store. It, this is why you have Google and it's available to you. So the one thing that they're learning, and there are plenty of articles below that explain this, is for most people, it's about your immune system kicking in and having a light case because 86% of the coronaviruses are a light case. So you want to build your immune system at first during those three to five days or if you get a fever, if you get a cough. So you temporarily cut back on coffee or sodas or smoking or partying hard. You know, so you want to just take care of yourself. Use things and you can Google what builds your immune system? Ginseng's always very good. However, if you get sick, or if you're an older person like myself, or if you have a pre-existing condition, you are at greater risk. If you do not catch it soon enough or prevent it from coming into your body, and you get sick, and your immune system is not functioning well, the immune system then goes into hyperdrive. And this is called a keto cytokine response. It's like having an asthma attack or an allergic response to a bee sting. It is when your body just goes into hyperdrive. This is a histamine reaction. The medical profession hasn't talked about whether they've tried using antihistamines or not. There's a homeopathic called histaminum you could try using. We don't know, but if you're getting this histamine reaction, why not try an antihistamine? Medical profession doesn't know yet. Maybe they'll eventually start doing it. So down below are a bunch of articles, and they're very good articles. You want to become knowledgeable about it. So the one thing we know on page three of this is coming from the Chinese Centers for Disease Control. Now, if you think the Chinese have not been out front, you're really pretty much mistaken about that. Every person that I've read about or listened to says the Chinese were incredibly prompt about sequencing this virus and getting it out into the international community. Sure, countries are deceiving. Look at the United States at the moment. I live in, in New Zealand. They're, they're not being terribly informative. The U.S. is not being informative. The CDC is not being informative. The Chinese have really tracked this. They're the ones who have been dealing with it. So they looked at 44,000 people, and it showed that 2.8% that of those infected men died compared to 1.7% of women. First of all, China has a lot of air pollution, and a lot of people smoke, particularly men. 0.2% of children and teenagers died and 15% of people over the age of 60 with pre-existing conditions. What we've also learned is that this is a cluster disease. It is not widespread. If you are in a cluster like Northern Italy or in Washington State or Yunnan, Yuhan in China, 
you are at risk. But Wuhan was a cluster. Other thousands of cities and towns in China have not developed clusters at this point because the government acted fast and first. If you are not in a cluster, if nobody is reported to be sick in your area, you are not at risk. Just go about your life. You cannot be frightened of the future. You are more likely to die in a car accident. You're more likely to have any kind of a problem than this virus if you are not in a cluster. And if one or two people in your area are sick, that does not mean it's a cluster. It just means that some people are sick. And 86% of those people will recover. And the people who will get severely sick have compromised immune systems, of which you might be one of them. So you want to know that the success in China has been to act immediately. They're acting as soon as a person has a fever. They're missing those first three to five days. So this talk, live talk on Facebook, tells you act first and act fast. Follow the simple protocol. Treat your anxiety and fear. You have to do this for your family. You want to just keep your orifices flushed out if you think that you have contracted this virus. Or this becomes a habit if you feel you have the flu. Just remember, the seasonal flu, although it kills 2.2% of the people, it affects millions and millions of people. This virus may do that eventually, but it doesn't seem to be doing that right now. It seems to be a cluster, which means if you are outside of that cluster, you do not have to be concerned. We do not need panic. We need clear thinking and acting adults in the room, and you are one of them. If you are a mom and dad, you want to take simple steps, and this is no different than you will do with your children. You do not leave sharp knives on the counter. You put them away. You light your hallways so children do not bump into walls in the middle of the night. So you take care of yourself and your family. And natural health is where we best excel in taking care of ourselves as family. So if you have any questions or comments, please share this link around. Please share the simple to-do list. We did not brand this to-do list because we want this to become common knowledge. We just want you to know that you have the ability to care for yourself and your friends and your loved ones. And we hope this resolves itself. And one more caveat, and I'm going to do this because it's forward thinking. The 1918 flu pandemic was massive. It started in the late winter, and it went away in the warm weather, and it came back in a vengeance the next winter, and that's where it killed 50 million people. Still, that was only 0.2% of the population that got sick. So you have to have a reality check here. However, this virus is new into our human species. We now live in a global community. It's really important for you to pay attention through this year and through next year. So that's our final word. Is that a cheery final word? I don't know. What I know is that I'm 75. I do not have a pre-existing condition, and I'm going to take care of my friends and my family, and I'm encouraging them to take care of their friends and their family and to do it wisely and with confidence. So take care and we'll continue our live Facebook presentations as we always do. Bye-bye.